Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions with Pastor Sutton. I'm glad you're here with me live today, live in living color. Um, it is uh, the 10th of January, Tuesday, Greek Tuesday. Mm. <laughs> coffee, coffee, good. Coffee, good. Um, gray and dull and kind of here in Wisconsin this morning. We're supposed to get some ice overnight. I don't think that happened, um, which is okay. We don't need ice. The uh, Luther College Music Department's Dorian Music Festival was last night. That was the uh, festival Alexander was in, and I was going to, Bonnie has shared out some posts about for the live performance, which was streamed on YouTube yesterday. And I went this morning to look for a link. I was going to share a link with you guys in case anyone wanted to go and see it. Um, but I, it's not there. So they did the live stream. It doesn't look like they posted the recording yet. I, I kind of made the assumption that the live stream would remain then as the, as the video, but I, I couldn't find a link. So if I find it later, I will share it with, uh, share it with you guys so you can see it. Um, apologies for yesterday. I, other things going on. I can't be here 24, seven, 365 for, for just this event, but, um, you know, I try, I try, and, you know, I've, I've thought about changing the timing a little bit or things like that, and you know what, it just doesn't. It was, I, I did, I, I did these videos back when I was <clears throat> still in my call at Marlette at, at uh, 9.30 in the morning at Marlette, so I was already at the church, and I was doing them at my desk in the church, uh, in my, in my study there, uh, rather than, from my home, um, of course, everything was a little different there, the way, well, it's different having a church and a school versus two churches. Um, but 9.30 Michigan's 8.30 Wisconsin. And so uh, I guess it just worked out that way. And in fact, Bonnie and I were talking about it the other day, and I said, well, I could back up to 7.30, but that means i got to be up earlier every morning. I could push it ahead to 9.30, but that means I'll never get started on the things I need to do before 10 or 11 o'clock, which that doesn't work. So here we are. Sometimes you're going to get recordings. Sometimes you're going to get old uh, old devotions posted, and sometimes you're just going to get my apologies. But here we are. Here we are either way. So good morning. I'm glad you are here joining me for a little time in God's Word. Uh, all of you, whether you are watching live right now or you are uh, watching live in the background and not commenting, or you are watching later today, either on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, let's see who is here, or at least who's chimed in this morning. Looks like at this very moment, I got 12 people. Uh, Geraldine and Neil, good morning. Mushtaq, good morning. Or good evening, I should say. Well, good morning to me. Good evening to you. Je Jeannie and Bob, good morning. Uh, cooler today. And you're down in Florida, though, aren't you? So cooler is a loose definition because we're warmer today here in Wisconsin. We're actually 28 right now. Ashley, yes, you can go back on the prayer list. I will, well, let me just take down my little sticky note here that has all these names on it. And we will add, uh, we'll add Ashley on here there done you're on it uh and good morning and jerry good morning 35 see you guys are warmer than us over there verna good morning michael good morning we're working security at the stadium today wonderful that's your your winter job wispy clouds in 72 <sighs> okay well it's florida oh i jumped i jumped Oh, Ashley says it's 29 and Donald Lawson. Jill and John, good morning. And uh, scrolling down a little. Here's Connie. Connie and Robin, good morning to you guys. Bit foggy. Yeah, I don't know if it's foggy or if it's that uh, the snow and, and ice and stuff starts to melt. You get, I mean, it's fog, but it's not what you traditionally think of as fog. Um, there's a name for it, and I just can't think of it right now. All right, well, let's get um, down to business here. I, we are not going to skip the readings from yesterday. So our reading today is going to be a little bit longer. 
um, because I want to go back. Um, the reading schedule for today is Ezekiel 18. The reading from yesterday is the rest of Ezekiel <clears throat> chapter 3. And I don't, I don't want to lose out on um, the rest of Ezekiel's call because it's kind of significant. Well, kind of, it's significant. Um, but we do have a commemoration today before we get rolling too far here. Uh, a, a, a fairly large one. Um, three historical men of the church. Uh, Basil, 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 the the great, Basil the Great of Caesarea, Gregory of Nazianus, and Gregory of Nyssa, uh, pastors and confessors. The, Basil and these two Gregories, collectively known as the Cappadocian Fathers, were leaders of Christian Orthodoxy in Asia Minor, which is today Turkey. Uh, in the later fourth century, Basil and Gregory uh, of Nyssa were brothers. Gregory of Nazianus was their uh, was their friend. Uh, all three uh, were influential in shaping the theology uh, ratified by the Council of Constantinople in AD 381, which is expressed in the Nicene Creed. And so, so these three men are, are significant uh, in the in the should I say the production, the gathering, the formation of the of the Nicene Creed. Uh, their defense of the doctrines of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, together with their contributions to the liturgy of the Eastern Church, make them among the most influential Christian teachers and theologians of their time. Uh, when we say Eastern Church, we're talking about the 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 Greek Orthodox Church and all the all the churches that flow out of the Greek Orthodox, because these these three men were Greek. Um, well, I, I, how do I want to say that? They were of the Greek church. Um, um, I believe, if I recall right, the Gregories are responsible for uh, the musical form used uh, sometimes in the church called Gregorian chant. Um, so, so yeah, so there we have our, our uh, commemoration for today. Basil the Great of Caesarea, Gregory of Nazianus, and Gregory of Nissa. Let's um, let's go ahead then and get into this. If you have a Lutheran service book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, the morning order, I have my treasury right here as we uh, proceed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I'm running low on coffee. This is not good. Um, our psalm today. Our psalm today. Psalm 85, uh, verses 1 through 4, 7 through 8. Oh, and I missed 10 through 13 are also part of this. So let's, um, I'm probably not going to say a whole lot on the psalm here just because the reading is going to be so much longer, but let's see what we have here. Psalm 85, select verses. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sin. You withdrew all your wrath. You, return, you turned from your hot anger. Restore us again, O God of our salvation, and put away your indignation toward us. Oh, hi. Coffee. Coffee and Bonnie and Doggy. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Thank you. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his saints, but let, not, let them not turn back to folly. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs up from the ground, and righteousness looks down from the sky. Yes, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Yeah, I, that's... um. You know, the, the psalmist first reminds the Lord uh, of what he has done, that he has redeemed his people, restored them, uh, forgiven them, and he calls on him to do it again. 
Um, and that's, that's sort of what we do uh, in our daily lives. We know that God has uh, restored us. We know that he's forgiven us through Christ Jesus. Um, we know he's withdrawn his wrath from us. Uh, and we ask him to do it again because we are poor, miserable sinners and daily we sin much and are in need of that grace that God gives. All right, let's go to our reading for today. Ezekiel. Now, as I said, we're, we're going to get two days worth of readings here, yesterday's and today's. Um, but it's an, it, the, the reading, the, the, yesterday's reading was the watchman, and, and it's important to have that, um, that reading. So let's, uh, and the suggested reading for yesterday, after we finish the reading that's included, is all of Ezekiel from chapter 4 to chapter 11. So let's uh, begin here. We're going to, Ezekiel 3, chapter 3, verse 12 through 27, and then we'll jump to chapter 13 for today. Then the Spirit lifted me up, and I heard behind me the voice of a great earthquake. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the glory of the Lord from its place. It was the sound of the wings of the living creatures as they touched one another, and the sound of the wheels beside them, and the sound of the great earthquake. The Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. The hand of the Lord was Lord being strong upon me. And I came to the exiles at Tel Abib, who were dwelling by the Kabar Canal. And I sat there. I sat where they were dwelling. And I sat there overwhelmed among them seven days. And at the end of seven days, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Wherever you hear, or whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his way, in order, that, in order to save his life, that wicked person shall die for his iniquity. But his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his wicked way. He shall die for his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. Again, if a righteous person turns from his righteousness and commits injustice, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because you have not warned him, he shall die for his sin, and his righteous deeds that he has done shall not be remembered, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the righteous person not to sin, and he does not sin, he shall surely live, because he took warning, and you will have delivered your soul. And the hand of the Lord was upon me there, and he said to me, Arise, go out into the valley, and there I will speak with you. So I arose and went out into the valley, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there, like the glory that I had seen by the Kabar Canal, and I fell on my face. But the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and he spoke with me and said, and said to me, Go, shut yourself within your house. And you, O son of man, behold, cords will be placed upon you, and you shall be bound with them, that, so that you cannot go out among the people. And I will make your tongue cling to the roof of your mouth, so that so that you shall be mute and unable to reprove them, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with you, I will open your mouth, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, He who will, he, he who will hear, let him hear, and he who will refuse to hear, let him refuse, for they are a rebellious house. So this is the word of the Lord for the first part of our reading, which was yesterday. And, 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 and this part, uh, this is significant, friends. Um, Ezekiel's call is the call of the church as well. Um, and, and it, and it, it um, sets up a structure for the work of a, of a pastor in the church. Um, yes, it's the Old Testament. You're right. Well, pastor, don't we have to just, you know, we're in the new covenant. Don't we ignore everything that's in the, in the Old Testament? No, it, it's written for our instruction. 
It's written for our learning. Um, so he comes, he comes to the Kabar Canal in Tel Aviv, and there seven days he, um, well, he's overwhelmed, right? He's, he's for a week, for a period of creation, from the day he's picked up through the Sabbath, I, I guess you could say. We don't have specific days, but that's the way I'm envisioning it. Um, he is there with those exiles. And then God comes to him and says, uh, son of man, which is one of the names of Christ, is it not? Right? Son of God, son of man. Uh, not that Ezekiel is the Christ, but this is what he's pointing to. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Now, what does a watchman do? A watchman is the guy who stands on the wall on the tower and watches what's going on in the world around and, and warns the city and the people in the city and the, and the ruler and the, and the military when something's going on. He's the man in the crow's nest on a boat, the, the iceberg ahead, right? Um, and so whenever you hear a word from my mouth, right, the word from God, you shall give them warning. So if you if 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 God says to the wicked, you shall surely die, right? Your sin is upon you, and if you remain in your sin, your life is lost. You are condemned. It, the the ESV likes to translate um, these words of condemnation as condemned. I like the old word damned. That's what the King James would give you. Uh, if, if you whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them a warning from me. If I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, you don't warn him, but you let him continue in the things that he is doing, nor speak to warn the wicked away from his wicked way, uh, with with for the for the reason that you would save his life, then that wicked person will die with his sin, but his blood, the fault of his death, will be on you. See what I did there? You. Uh, but if you warn the wicked, and he still does not turn from his wickedness or from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. So again, God clarifies, if a righteous person turns from his righteousness to injustice, if he goes from, from uh, faithfulness to sinning, and, and, uh, uh, and, and God lays a stumbling block before him uh, that is... A death trap, scandal. Well, in the Greek, it'd be scandalizone, but a death trap. Um, uh, and and and. But you warned him, right? You said the block is there. Don't trip and fall on it. You'll die. Um, then uh, he shall die. If he chooses to trip over it, he shall die for having tripped over it, and and that will be his problem. Um, and the righteousness, the good things he's done, the faithful things he's done will not be remembered. Um, and, and you will have saved your soul. But if you say nothing and he trips over it and dies, his blood will be on your hands and, and you, you, will be, uh, you will be blamed for it. That's, that's, that's why pastors preach law and gospel. And that's why pastors in counseling with people, talking with people say, no. Don't sin. Don't do these things, right? That's why when we see public and open and unrepentant sin, we say, stop, because you will die in them. Um, and don't get mad at the pastor if he shows up at your door and knocks on the door and says, you are engaged in unrepentant sin. He's not going to say that. He says, can we talk? And talks about it, and, and the sin is opened up to you. Don't get mad at the pastor. He's the messenger. He's the watchman. He sees the stumbling block that lies in your path, and he's calling you away from it. If you get mad at him and, and choose to, uh-oh, uh-oh, we lost our connection here. I just went to zero, 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 zero. Oh, there, we're back. I was saying, don't blame the pastor if he comes, because he's telling you about the stumbling block in front of you. And, and if you stumble on that stumbling block and he hasn't told you, the pastor is the one who's going to suffer. You will die in your sin, but the pastor will, will be held responsible for not saying something. But if he sees that stumbling block and he says, stop, sin no more, receive forgiveness and grace, move ahead, pray to God to help you to avoid the stumbling block. And 
you still stumble on it. At least the pastor has done the job that God has commanded him. See, the watchman is the watchman's important, and this is an important passage. Um, he even says to Ezekiel, so that Ezekiel isn't accused of speaking man's word rather than God's word. He says, "I will, I will. Sh- you will go shut yourself in your house and bind yourself with cords, and I will cause your tongue to cling to the roof of your mouth, so you can't speak." But when God says, "When I come," I will free your tongue. I will open your mouth and you shall say to them, thus says the Lord, your God. And he who will hear, will hear. And he who will refuse to hear, let him refuse to hear. For there are rebellious homes. And that reminds us that not everybody who hears the word of God and not everybody who hears the promise of the gospel and not everybody uh, who who you pray for and 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 love and care about will be saved because some will hear and some will simply refuse and there's nothing that you can do about it or i can do about it it's on them but if you say nothing if you just condone what they're doing and do nothing then it's on you because this goes beyond just the pastor. Because telling people, pointing out people's sin, not to be obnoxious, not to be bold or better, but to say, I'm a poor, miserable sinner, and I see what you're doing, and that is sinful. Step away from it. That's pure. That's just Christian, right? I don't want to see anybody burning in the fires of hell, do you? Doesn't mean I can take them out of it, but I can certainly say, look out. I, I, I like to use the old, I, I like to use a, a comparison for this. If you saw somebody running towards a cliff where the fall was a thousand feet if they went off the edge and they're running blindly towards that cliff, would you stop them? Would you body check them so that they don't go over the cliff? Or would you just let them fly out and enjoy the idea of flying until they become flat? Let's continue. We're going to continue here in Ezekiel. And we're going to go to, uh, and that's why we need Christ, by the way, to forgive our sins. That's what Christ does. He shows us what's right and wrong. He shows us uh, our sin, um, but he also shows us our salvation by his death and resurrection. So let's go on here to Ezekiel 18. Um, I should read more Ezekiel. Ezekiel 18, we're going to read 1 through 4, and then we're going to jump to 19 through 32. And this is actually today's reading now. So, Ezekiel 18, 1. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, declares the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Behold, all oh, I'm losing again. I dropped out again. Okay, I'm back again. If you missed it, Ezekiel 18, verse 1, I'm going to start again. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, declares the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. Now we jump to verse 19. Yet you say, why should not the son suffer for the iniquity of the father? When the son has done what is just and right and has been careful to observe all my statutes, he shall surely live. The soul who sins shall die. The son shall not suffer for the iniquity of the father nor the father suffer for the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. But if a wicked person turns away from all his sins that he has committed and keeps all my statutes and does what is just and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. 
None of the transgressions that he has committed shall be remembered against him. For the righteousness that he has done, for he, done, he shall live. And have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord God? And not rather that he should turn from his way and live? But when a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injustice and does the same abominations that the wicked person does, shall he live? None of the righteous deeds that he has done shall be remembered. For the treachery of which he is guilty and the sin he has committed, for them he shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear now. O house of Israel, is my way not just? Is not your ways that are is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die for it. For the injustice that he has done, he shall die. Again, when a wicked person turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is just and right, he shall save his life because he considered and turned away from all the transgressions that he had committed. He shall surely live, and he shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, are my ways not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, declared the Lord God. Repent and turn from your transgressions, lest iniquity be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed, and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord God. So turn and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So these two things go together, right? The watchman to whom God gives the word and in the responsibility, uh, the vocation to declare that word to his people, uh, to proclaim it to those who are uh, headed towards a stumbling block that they might not stumble, um, that they might turn and repent. And then he, he brings it around again and he says, okay, it was a belief among the Israelites that um, the children of the father would suffer for the father's sins. And and the commandments kind of say that. Uh, well, not the commandments, uh, the close of the commandments. Um, um, I will, hmm, how does it go? It, it, it's, it's, it's the suffering of those who hate me to the, to the third and fourth generation, um, but uh, love for those who love me to a thousand generations. I, I'm paraphrasing here. And so the, the Israelites had said this, this parable, this proverb, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. So because of what the father did, what the father ate, the children are gonna suffer. Um, but God says, no. The iniquity of the one who does the iniquity falls on the, on the one who did the iniquity. However, if a father does a thing, it's hard for the son not to do it, right? The, the son follows in the father's footsteps, not all the time, not all the time. But quite often the son follows in the father's footsteps. So if the, if the, if the father um, was an unrepentant sinner, um, it's likely the child will be an unrepentant sinner. But God calls both individually out of their trespasses and into his forgiveness, into his grace. Um, that's his justice. And we, we so often get God's justice confused with our justice, right? It, it, if, even if a man is, has been a, has done wicked things, if he repents and turns from them, God forgives him. Our human justice says if he's done one thing that is terrible, then he should suffer his entire life and eternity for it. That's our justice. And we say our justice is just, right? The Israelites' justice, if the father was in iniquity, then the son should suffer for it. How is that just? How is that righteous? But God's justice judges each on their own 
And God's justice gives to the people the word to hear. And if they will listen and repent and turn, then God will give them life. God doesn't desire the death of a sinner. And, and it's not God who condemns the sinner, but the sinner who condemns himself and God allows his condemnation. Think about that for a minute. If, if you are in, if a person is in unrepentant sin, things that God has said, no, do this and die. And the person says, no, I'm going to do it anyway. Then they brought it on themselves. My father used to say, you cut your nose off to spite your face, right? But if they hear the word and they say, oh, I didn't realize that that was wrong. I didn't realize that that was iniquity, that that was sin, that, that there was law against this. I'll stop. I repent. I'm sorry. David, with the whole Bathsheba and Uriah, I have sinned before God and man. And, and Nathan says to him, your sin is forgiven. You shall not die. The child pays for the iniquity. The child dies. But David is forgiven. Friends, God does not desire the death of a sinner. What he desires is that all would turn and believe. In fact, ultimately, in the, in the, in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, through Christ Jesus' death and resurrection, God's hope, his desire, now he's, he's God, he could force it on you, but he doesn't do that. He gives you free will, free will that's either bound to him or bound to sin. But it is his, his hope for all mankind that we would see his son and turn from sin to life by faith in Christ. That's what a pastor's job is to tell you. And that's what the promise is that we have in Christ Jesus. And I dropped out again. How long am I going to be dropped out for? Am I? Bonnie says I'm still going, so I'm still here with you guys. Oh, I'm still gone. Yep. Now I'm back. Looks like I'm back. Yep. Uh, I hope you didn't miss too much of that. But God does not desire the death of a sinner. But that all would... I'm gone again. There is something wrong here. No, I'm still going. I'm still going. There must be, I wonder if there's ice on the dish. I turned off the, the constant heat and just have it manually heating or automatically heating, and it may not be. I'll have to turn that back on. Friends, we're going to stop there. God does not desire the death of the sinner, but all would turn to Christ and live. Amen. Let's go to our prayer of the day because it is getting, getting a little long here. Let us pray. Almighty God, you revealed to your church, your eternal being of glorious majesty and perfect love as one God and trinity of persons. May your church with bishops like Basil and of Caesarea, Gregory of Nazanus and Gregory of Nyssa receive grace to continue steadfast in the confession of the true faith and constant in our worship of you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we pray as our Lord taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, in the interest of time here, I do have to get to Greek. I'm going to kind of cut this short. Let's pray for those who have asked for our prayers and those in need. 
uh, and then we'll move into Luther's uh, Luther's morning prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask your comfort and mercy, your assurance and blessing upon those who call upon your most holy name, whether whether their suffering be from illness, age, or recovering from injury, or other bodily and and uh, uh, mental mental need. We ask, O oh Lord, that you hear our prayers for them and that you hear their prayers as well. Especially this day, we pray for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, and all who call upon your most holy name. Heavenly Father, we ask that you that you sustain them by the faith that you've given them. All, all of these and those who call upon your most holy name wherever they have need. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you, For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God's peace, my friends. We will be back here tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning, for our daily devotions together. God's peace be with you.